Hi everyone and welcome to our regular Monday evening live show. So I hope this one uh, finds you well um, wherever you are. We are Just for Laughs streaming this over on YouTube. Hello all you YouTubers who persist in being in that platform. We're out in Getter, we're out in Rumble, we're out on uh, the uh, the Twitter sphere as well. So uh, hi Leslie. So we uh, yeah we're broadcasting across the parts of the uh, known world that I'm interested in anyway. So hope this all finds you well. And um, just a, a few things before we get going with our special guest for this evening. Um, and the first thing uh, is just a gentle reminder to everybody that th I know some of you have signed up, so that's good. But for those of you who haven't, haven't signed up, uh, I know who you are. And I'm talking about my Substack, where you can read all kinds of stuff like BAFTAs and sulfur. What do I mean, BAFTAs and sulfur? Am I suggesting that these um, music and um, these TV and movie things are satanic? Yeah, I think I must be. So anyway, you can check out all kinds of stuff over in Substack. Uh, it, uh, it, it's for your extra entertainment. So you might, uh, you might, uh, you might consider that. And then the other th quick thing to say is before we get going that. Uh, we've got a live event coming up in a very, very short amount of time. It's just around the corner. Hold the line, challenge the narrative with Mr. Lawrence Fox, leader of the Reclaim Party, Father Calvin Robinson, um, I think two of the most independent free thinkers floating around. It's in good old London town, 1st of March, as you all know, uh, starting doors open at seven o'clock. So, uh, you know something, it only seems like yesterday since we did the previous one, but uh, back in December, uh, but time moves on and the 1st of March has come around. So if you haven't bought your ticket, what are you doing? What are you waiting on? Do make sure that you are there. And I know, yes, um, uh, as Leslie points, I'll be there um, and uh, Jed will be there. A certain other person will be there as well, actually. Um, and uh so what we'll do is, I think we'll, um, yes, I want to just talk, uh, bring up, of course, um, none of this really would be possible without a great friend over at Quantum Hypno. And uh, so what we'll do, as we always do, is we'll run the ad. Play. Quantum Hypno is a transformative approach that connects with the superconscious through the power of hypnosis. I take the time to get to know you and create a relaxed setting where you can share your life story there's no wrong. Cut. What are we doing? Oh, my God. I can't believe we did that. You know, uh, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I do have to apologize because why do we need to have Sarah Smith from Quantum Hypno on the video when we can have her in the studio? Without further ado, please bring in our very special guest, Sarah. Hiya, Sarah. <laughs> Hi, David. How are you? Yeah, no, I'm good. Do you know, it's really good to actually get to see you uh, like this. We, we, we play the, um, you know, the, the video of obviously a lot here. So I'm sure a lot of my audience know you, but uh, I see you're being welcomed there. So, uh, yeah, sir, so thanks very much for uh, for spending the next hour with us on this, uh, this platform, which, uh, as I say, you're a great supporter of. Um, and uh, we're really looking forward mm -hmm. to... You know, we, 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 we last met together in in, uh, in December, if, if you remember, on that dark night in a certain mm. undisclosed location <laughs> in London town. Yes. And, uh, somewhere we're in gonna, London. Yeah. Somewhere in London, folks. Could be anywhere. Uh, but um, we're going to be back, Sarah, on Monday, uh, as we say, Friday, Friday week, as they say, Friday, 1st of March. And we've got Lawrence and uh, Calvin coming along. Yeah. And uh, again, uh, another night's... Um, free speech i guess sir is what this all about you know and uh um, and yeah. what's your thoughts yeah. on on the forthcoming event what do you think I, about i'm it? a big fan actually yeah i i've i've actually been following lawrence fox for a while as well so yeah, yeah. i can't wait to finally meet him in person it's exciting isn't it and it's, it's lovely for me to be able to sponsor people like you and other as you said you know people who advocate for f free speech and you know you, we don't want censorship do we no you know? but but the thing is so Sarah, I, I can't wait 
we we live in an absolute age of of censorship. You, you, you know that one of the mm. things. This is one of my. I guess this is my main hobby horse. I believe that you should be able to talk about what you want. So should I. So should everybody. Our critics should be able to talk about whatever they want if they want to tell me yeah. how bad I am. Don't mind that. But but that's yeah. not the world we're in. We're in a world where increasingly. And in, in actually, your home country, in, in Ireland, free mm. speech has never been under greater assault. I mean, mm. when, when you look over to Ireland and you see all the stuff, Sarah, you know, the, the, the Irish government um, mm. basically threatening anybody who speaks out against their narrative with, mm. you know, criminal fines, if not actually, uh, you know, uh, uh, criminal sentences, uh, mm. which is what's happening, my friend Gemma O'Doherty at the moment. How, how do you... How do you how do you feel about that Ireland, you know, the Ireland of 2024 versus the Ireland that you would have grown up in? Well, we always we were always known as the fighting Irish, weren't we? You know, it, it, they, they wouldn't put up with anything. And then I, I thought, you know, COVID, I thought the whole narrative, I thought the people were going to stand up and fight and say, we're not going to go into lockdown. And I, I, I didn't see that happening as much as I thought it would be. Then we saw a lot of the women standing up, didn't we, as well? But now I'm seeing a difference because of the, uh, the you know, the immigrants coming in, illegal yep. immigrants and stuff, and yep. they are beginning to sort of stand up now, aren't they, and fight back. Yeah. And not not yep. that we're condoning violence or anything yep. like that. No, but, but, they, well, but basically, I mean, it's, it's no more outrageous for people to say, you know, Ireland for the Irish, as mm. Somali for the Somalians, it's 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 not it's not racist. It's just an observation. It's not racist. It's not yeah. racist. But but as you yeah. said, the changes in Ireland, um, like you, I was shocked how compliant the Irish people were. Mm. Uh, you know, back back in in, in 2020, 2021, when they were boasting about in certain Irish counties, Sarah, I think they were getting the um, you know, the compliance of people taking the jab rate. I think it was, mm. it was in Waterford or somewhere. Anyway, it was written, it was in the nineties. I couldn't believe I know. it. Really, really high. And, yeah. and one theory, I, I'll ask your thoughts on this. I think, is the Irish water supply not fluoridated? Is yeah. that an issue, do you think? Yeah, that, that, I mean, that was my, the, I think when I first met you uh, a year ago or so at Comcast, well, I said, yeah. what happened to the Irish, the fighting yeah, Irish? There were exceptions like Gemma O'Doherty, John Waters, and uh, yeah. Andy Heisman. And they were they were doing amazing things to wake the people up. You know, mm. but but there was there was so few people. Even we we flew over to Dublin at um because of the teacher Enoch Burke that had been uh, yep. jailed in Mount yep. Joy, and we flew over. We were standing on the streets, sort of you know trying mm. to you know get some publicity around this as well. And there was there was maybe twenty of us. I thought you know because he he didn't Enoch Burke he wasn't prepared to use the his hers or them their gender stuff. Yeah, pronouns. yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. But 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 you know, again, going back to you know your youth and, and certainly and, and and even my before you, because I'm much older than you, my youth. Mm -hmm. Like Ireland was always seen as this kind of, you know, it was a Catholic country. It was a conservative with a small C country. It yeah. was quite religious. Uh, it's probably very religious. Um, yeah. And, and people were reserved, and mm -hmm. and it, it seemed to place family. Um, put a lot of priority mm -hmm. in family, and I, I I vividly remember that back in the even the nineteen eighties. I remember that, but then when the Celtic Tigers seemed to come in, a lot of that went out the window in the nineties mm -hmm. and the noughties, and, and 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 of course you had the big economic crash in Ireland in two thousand and eight. When I think Sarah, I think two th the, that crash of the banks in Ireland. I I think that was when the globalists moved in, took over Ireland, they gutted it. And since then, we've had, you know, all kinds of referendums on abortion, on, on gay marriage, so-called, and on all mm. of these things. And it seems that the Irish people are probably amongst the most liberal. And it's happened in in, in a lifetime. Yes. What do you think? Mm. But may, maybe they were targeted, David. What do you think? I think the country was targeted for being yeah. so, like you said, they had the strong faith and yeah. the, the Catholicism and our spirituality as well. And I'm wondering if they, the globalists massively targeted our country for that reason. I, yeah, I completely agree, sir. Yeah. In fact, there's a story in the, in the press I read the last couple of days. I think they're going to, you know, is it Tara Hill? You know, Tara Hill, which is this kind of spiritual um kind of almost epicenter of ireland um 
And I, I think there's a mountain over it or there's somewhere over it. And they're going to build, this is surreal, they're going to build a migrant center, right? A migrant center overlooking, because a lady contacted me in the past couple of days to try and get a bit of publicity because mm. the local people find this. You know, this is just, this is an assault on, on the spirituality. I think you're right, of the Irish people. Yeah. Um, it's kind yeah. of, it shocks me. I mean, it does shock me. It shocks me when I have friends in Dublin say to me, um, you know, David, we're thinking of moving to the north. And I'm thinking, why Why would you do that? And they're saying, because we're worried that at some point in the not too distant future, um, you know, we're not going to be able to say anything. And, yeah. you know, like you and I, I mean, and, and people like us, we, we do like to speak truth and, and, and honestly. And, you know, mm. and, and it seems to me that Ireland might be the first full on almost neo-fascist country in, in, in Europe because mm. they've, they've, they've destroyed the people. You're, you're right, Sarah. It's like they've been under uh, spiritual attack. Um, yeah. The water's poisoned, as far as I can see. Um, the, the love of money became a big, big thing, especially in Dublin. I remember it well back in the, the noughties. Mm. Every every taxi I was ever in in Dublin back then, the taxi driver had at least two or three foreign properties, which lasted. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It was, it was and amazing. then it crashes, doesn't it? Right. Because yeah. they always need change, don't yeah. they, as well, the instability. Yeah. So, yeah. So Ireland became... Um, the late noughties, you know, 2007, 8, 9, 10, it became, I mean, the, the economic crisis was was was, was uh, horrendous. And then, Sarah, what seems to have come out of that is we've now got this globalist government in Dublin. Doesn't matter if it's Fine Gael, Fine, Gael, Fine Fall, Sinn Féin, doesn't matter. They're all the same. They're open borders. They don't seem to yeah. have any connection to spirituality uh, or the... The, the, the actual, the, the thing that makes uh, uh, Irish people, I'll, I'll just see a comment here. Someone says, Top Cat. Hi, Top Cat. says, they twisted the Irish arms up their back. They, they're waking up now. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's probably that's right the there. Thing. When, when, but when you're, you know, you can only keep a ball down in water for so long. You can only, mm. you can only sort of press, uh, pressure everything down before it's all going to, you know, mm. come back the other way, and that's where the way I see thing, uh, things moving, David, is coming back around to spirituality. Mm. And I think a lot of people are coming to me; they're working with me because they're fed up with the NHS and allopathic medicine, big pharma, doctors yep. and surgeons. You know, and yep. I was always told in my training, you should never even cut the body; you should you shouldn't be poisoning the body with medications mm. and cutting the body at all. Mm. So that's why I think I remember watching Dolores Cannon six years ago, thinking, "What is?" she talking about I, I saw a video of her on youtube and i thought yeah. I remember she said you know allopathic medicine all this is going that way and if you want a job for the future go that way start going into natural therapies and remedies mm. and everything mm. and mm. she always said as well do what you love do a job that you love and you'll always be happy and i think that's what i i found with people david they want to know i think we talked we, you and i talked about this the other night you said my favorite question you said what is it that people want to know the number one question when mm -hmm. they come to me? And that is, what is my purpose in life? Why am I here? And I think once you find why you're here and what is your purpose here, mm -hmm. you know, everything else falls into place in your life, doesn't it? You know, well, we need to start yeah. with ourselves, don't we? Completely agree. And, 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 and I mean, it's been, it's been such a, a fascinating journey, Sarah. As you point out, we met about, I think it's about a year ago, roughly, um, yeah. in, in February of 2023 at the yeah. comedy Comcast thing that we were at. That's right, there yeah. were a lot of awakened people at that. But yeah. I have to say, I've got to tell you, to be honest, back then I was somewhere somewhere down the rabbit hole. Since then, I've gone much further down the <laughs> rabbit hole because you begin because once you waken up, I don't think you can then go back. Do you? Do you think you can no. come on awake? No, but 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 why would you? Because we started watching the last three or four years. We started seeing people with their, you know, the face nappies on and stuff. And we're we're trying to talk to people, going, "What's wrong with you? Wake up and don't take, you know, these yeah. injections." And don't, why are you wearing the mask? And I used to I used to have the little, um, you know, used to see the stickers on the ground telling you where to stand and where. And I would I would walk always the wrong way against the little arrows, not stand on the stickers, not wear the face nappies and yeah. stuff. And I used to think, you know. Well, what's the worst that can happen? But I enjoyed actually non, not conforming. And I thought, why is everybody conforming, you know? 
Well, I, I want to talk to you about that because yeah. in, in the context of hypnosis as well, I'll, 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 I'll get on to that in a minute or two because it's, it's interesting actually. But, but yeah, no, no, I love that. I, I love that. The, uh, the rebel spirit, you know, if they tell you, do not use this door, I'm always good. I, I will <laughs> use that door, you know, but maybe it's just a contrarian instinct that we're not going to be told and we're not going to be treated like, like little children when we're actually yeah. growing adults, you know, but they, but they spoke down to you, didn't they? Did, the, did. The, the politicians said, wash your hands. Yep. And they're using the power of three space, Part three. something yep. else and something else face, something else, you know? It, yeah. yeah. And they're doing yeah. it on the tube, you know, it's say it's sorted and it, 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 it's, it's programming you all the time. You know, I'm, you could this, really see it. Yeah, absolutely, Sarah. And, and the, the thing that I've really woken up to as well is that they were doing that during COVID for, for sure. And, and yeah. a lot of us suddenly became aware of it. Now yeah. I'm aware of the fact that you talk about programming. If you watch TV, if you watch mainstream TV, I think you're being programmed. You are Whether being programmed. News, yeah. news yeah. channels, movies, documentary. Yes. You're being programmed into ways that are bad. I mean, as I say, I did put out that thing in my Substack about the Baftas and sulfur because you can almost, or the music, <laughs> the music awards. I mean, yeah. basically, Satanism yeah. on stage. And I yeah. wouldn't have thought that a few four or five years ago. But once you've woken up, you see, yeah. oh right, I see, I see the world in in the way it is, not in the way they've been programming us to do Sarah so I think a healthy mind means you'd be independent critical thinker which we are and and there's more of us now than there was uh, four years ago like you know that's that's a plus I take from all of this that we've gone through tribulation yeah. for sure but but I think there's yeah. more of us now than there, there ever was what what do you yeah. think we need to unite it's it's not us against them and all of this it's all of us together and some people Humanity. say they took the vaccine and now they're on our side well god they're on our side it, it yeah. should, they shouldn't be dividing us it's another you know the vaccinated the non-vaxxed and he was on that side and now they're on our side but so what? It's good, yeah. isn't it? You know, it, it divide totally. and conquer. We need to unify, don't we? All of us, you know. They they use divide and conquer as the rule, as 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 the way to yeah. rule us, and continually. I see it happening all the time. I see it happening even in mm. the so-called truth community. I yeah. see I see infighting and people saying, "Oh, look, he's a shell. He's a shell. Whatever. Yeah, They're not yeah. as pure as me." Yeah. There's no room for. I mean, there's. I think that's stupid. The, the like you say. Some of us from the beginning knew things were wrong. And, and there's even people who knew that it was going to happen. So I know I know all of that. And, and there was people that didn't recognize it. And there's people I know, listen to this, who did take jobs. And I have family and friends who it's took a, jobs. Yeah. You know, I, I don't judge them people at all. Most of no. them, like all of the lot around me, they've all figured out after their third job, they all kind of had a boom, light bulb moment, which yeah. said, even normies, no, this is not. No, no more. And and yeah. and you know. Yeah. And that's good. So we shouldn't judge, and we shouldn't divide. And certainly, you know, um, I welcome anybody who comes onto the side of freedom, and uh, you know, basically fighting back against governmental tyranny. Because because ultimately, I mean, you know, you you mentioned their, um, you know, the the, right. the the rule of three and all that all the stuff that they were doing. And and here's a question yeah. I have for you, Sarah. Yeah. I remember, do you remember back in 21, 22, they talked about this thing about they all, you know, so many people were wearing their masks, doing their hand, the, ritual, the rituals of COVID, as I call it. And um, the, the thing is that the uh, the government was, it, it's the, the, I think it was Robert Malone coined the term mass psychosis hypnosis. It, it was people yeah. had been somehow... Well, you could describe it better than me, but it was looked like the whole population would be hypnotized and this is yeah. what they must do. It, what, yeah. what are you taking? Is, is it possible to hypnotize an entire population? It's it's fear, isn't it? And they're yeah. using emotional blackmail as well. You're going to kill grandma uh, and all of this, you know, and of course it's fear and it's guilt and it's it's. 
using it's going straight to our basic survival instincts as well isn't it mm-hmm. so i think that's how they they got to the majority of people and yeah. i always I always wondered how come not how come we could all see through it what's different about us we could mm-hmm. see through it and we're trying to tell people you know, they couldn't see it at all but but you know uh, mark passio was a former satanic priest and he said even the satanic priests if they came out and said it's all a hoax it's all a, yeah, everything we've been telling you about satanism it's all you, you still can't change those people there's some people that you can't you will never change them but like yeah. you said a lot of them that did take two or three jabs they said no more mm. and i'm seeing people now uh with cancers and turbo cancers and i can help them yeah. in the session this can help mm. and i've also had people that want the want the vaccines removed from the body and the therapy can remove the vaccine from the body as well so there is hope there there is therapies like this that are they're so powerful they can do anything at all with the body well, again, we'll, we'll explore that. We'll, we'll move on to those, Sarah, because yeah. you, you've, you've said earlier there about, you know, wanting to get into the, to these areas of, of, of health and to be able to help people to do something that you love, as you said. Yeah. And, and the bit where I've been so shocked is if you take the allopathic doctors, those people, yeah. uh, like they take the Hippocratic Oath and all of that. Yeah, and yet, to do no harm. Yeah, to do first do no harm. And and, I mean, I can count on the fingers of one hand the number of doctors, and I've had some of them on the show here with me, like Dave Cartland, who have stood against the, you know, the whole jab thing. But a lot of these doctors were very happy to tell people, come on in, you've nothing to fear, roll up your sleeve, we'll put the needle in, it's all going to be fine. So, I mean, what? how could they do that in all good conscience, do you think? Do you think they were suckered in by the propaganda? Are they evil? What, what, what do you, how do you understand that? I, I wouldn't say the majority of them are evil. They, like you said, they probably believed, you know, they're, they're trained, they're left brain, they're in a box and they're trained to just, you know, it's allopathic medicine. That's all you can do. Everybody else is quacks. I'm getting the doctors now, like Dr. Peter Glidden. I shared a patient with him and he thought the uh, cancer patient and he said the changes were miraculous and he wanted to meet me. He's one of the biggest doctors in America and a colleague of Dr. Mercola as well. She asked yeah. me to, Yep. come and train them as well so so a lot of them are coming on our side now and they're realizing it isn't working but i i, I you know it's 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 hard to it's, it's hard to say they're all evil i certainly don't i would i wouldn't like to believe that no but i think that why don't they ask questions that's the thing they're taught not to ask questions you hand out your medication yeah. give it the jabs you don't ask what's in it mm-hmm. we were more we were more educated than those doctors were weren't we we were looking at a brilliant work of Ricardo Delgado from La Quinta Columna. He was researching and what was in the vials and what he he found amazing um, yeah. information about uh, graphene oxide. He was doing the work. People like that. Mm. Yeah, they, they, don't, they don't even question. No, I think that's it. The, 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 one of the understand. Yeah, I don't think they're evil. Well, not not the no. lower level ones. When no. we get to the locks of the Doctor Fauci's and the likes of Absolutely. the Bill oh. Gates, <laughs> different, he, different story. Fauci was was destroying something like thousands of dogs. He, I, how can you do that? You know, and for, for torturing them as well. You know, so I'm a huge. I, I I'm a huge lover of dogs. I know you are too. Uh, okay. How can you do that? How can you experiment on the most beautiful animals and stuff? So even the name Fauci, yes. And and he he's he's binding his time. He has bodyguards and everything guarding him because he does. Uh, he does. Yeah. Yep. He has a permanent 24-7 uh, bodyguard ar- around him. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I reckon in history, yep. Sarah, people will look back on Fauci the way they look on Men- Dr. Mengele from the Nazi era in the 1940s. Like or the yeah, okay, I know. Like it, you know, on, on, on Jewish people and stuff. So I, I think that's his, gonna be his um, his final sort of um, uh, judgment. But he's worse anyway. because he should have learned. That's that's right, but we should have been learning from history. We should have learned from World War II. And how did they, you know, what happened after World War II? How did they brainwash those people to, to yeah. accept what was going on as well? Well, the, 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 I used to wonder in World War II, how, how come so many Germans went along with 
the, the Nazis. After the last couple of years, I completely understand it because I think you summed up probably the biggest, most important yeah. word, fear. If you get people to be fearful, they will yeah. turn to you for support. Yeah. And, you know, uh, basically Hitler put forward this, this notion that Germany was under attack from all around, yeah. partly right and partly wrong. But it yeah. rallied people to the cause of the Nazis. And I think um, some of the folks behind the COVID business, that they, they learned that lesson, the, the, the uh, you know, these psychiatrists and these uh, psychologists that they used, you know, the nudge units. And they, they know that all of us human beings, and we're, no, we're all the same, you know, if we're mm. very scared, we'll turn to someone to try and help us. And yeah. this was how they got people to turn to the masks and the distancing and then ultimately the jabs and all mm -hmm. of that, you know. But um, but I do think they overreached, Sarah. I really do think they overreached in 20, 2021 and people like us suddenly popped up and we haven't gone anywhere. And we've been <laughs> going to, and it's it's kind of encouraging, you, you know, that uh, um, once you get in, once you understand that allopathic medicine in particular is I'm not telling anyone not to take it, it's not my job, but I'm just saying there are other choices and we do not have to go for a pill for every ill, um, which uh, which I just think yeah. is just, well, mind, mind you, just, sorry, just to say, just to add, um, I've been on a journey the past week, those who tune into my uh, podcast will see, I, I thought that vitamins were really good. Um, and, and then I started to do research on vitamins. And then I discovered this thing, synthetic vitamins. And then I oh, went, yeah. oh, my God, where's the vitamin C and vitamin D in the sort of vitamins you'd buy in your local Tesco or Holland and Bar? Where does that come from? Well, China and India. Who makes it? Uh, well, amongst others, oh, Pfizer. No. You know I mean? So you think, no, 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 do oh, not. Oh, again. <laughs> You know, so so you can there's there you can get natural vitamins that do not have these fillers and additives and all kinds of stuff in yeah. it, which is awful. Good. But it just shows you, yeah. Sarah, the critical mindset that we developed in the last few years. We do have to apply it to everything because yeah. you know you sort of think, oh, I'm I'm escaping allopathic medicine. I'm taking natural vitamins and so I'm taking vitamins. And then you realize, but not all vitamins are the same. Some nope. vitamins could be very bad for you, actually. And yeah. so they don't, they don't poison you with their jabs. They'll poison you with their vitamin Cs and their vitamin Ds and their dodgy zincs and all the rest of it. So I, I find that it's amazing the knowledge we now can get, though. And look, this is, you know, on, online. There's so many good sources now for people to investigate and to understand better, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I see some... yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's no, I see, yeah, I just I, see some, just say... someone yeah. saying here they're on the Celtic sea salt and apple cider vinegar. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's uh, D, that's a uh, exactly. I take Celtic sea yeah. salt every day. Sorry, yeah. sorry, right. because it's not it's not all created equally. The table salt is quite bad for you. That's cheap, and I think there can be plastics or something. Yeah, that is not yeah. I remember. Yeah, so the Celtic yeah. one is really good. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a million books out there about self help mm. and the you know the chicken soup books and yeah, you know every yeah. we we know what we need to do. But why can't we do it or why aren't we doing it? You know, I get people who say to me, I'm an alcoholic. I know I need to give up drinking, but how do I do it? And what the, what they're missing, they say to me sometimes is the willpower to, to you know, to stop. achieve what they want to yeah. achieve. Yeah, to yeah. stop. Yeah. But it's not as easy as saying, oh, for goodness sake, just stop. That's what I do. I, re I address everything. We go back and back and back to why were they drinking in the first place? You mm -hmm. know? Well, okay, so that gets us into the whole area of what you do and quantum hypno and hypnosis generally. Now, I did a wee bit of research on hypnosis ahead of our chat this evening, and I was very fascinating to under fascinated to understand that actually hypnosis itself goes right back into ancient cultures. I mean, there's there's it's not just a phenomena of the 1800s and with sort of mesmerism mm -hmm. and all of that. It goes right the way back. So it's almost like humanity um, yeah. fr from the beginning recognized that yeah. there there is a role for hyp hypnosis in 
in in in in, in their lives and in, in their health management yeah. and all the rest yeah. of it. Um, yeah. What was your entry point into hypnosis? Uh, and uh, do you agree that hypnosis has always been there in one form or another in the back as part of our lives? Yeah, yeah, I I do because it's just a form of trance. It's a, but 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 what I do is the deepest mm. form of trance. But as soon as you close your eyes, you're you're you know you're going into a type of trance. You know, even when you drive your car from A to B, sometimes sometimes you don't even know how you get there. You've gone into trance. So yeah. it's a way of the body just closing the eyes and just relaxing and focusing. That's all it is. You know, people complicate it and go, I'm going to be taken over. I'm going to be. It's not. Somebody, another client said it was like walking into a quiet library, taking out a book and reading it and going through the knowledge. But what you said is fascinating, David, because, yeah, I would imagine it goes back a very, like to ancient times yeah. where they knew yeah. they had this knowledge, didn't they? Yeah. And I'm wondering whether it's been taken away from us. I think what I'm doing is probably been deeply, deeply hidden because it's going against big pharma and allopathic medicine and everything yeah. that we've all we've all ever known since we were born you know so yeah so it would go back a very very long time and also we go into trance a deep trance well we go into the state of theta twice a day when we before we go into a deep sleep at night and before we wake up you're going into it all, all the time anyway you know but it's mm. just with 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 my work it's just sort of talking you gently in and asking you to lie down and visualize in the morning but to answer the question I came across a Dolores Cannon video about yeah. six years ago. I'm just right before I found that video, I kept saying, I want to know everything. Who built the pyramids? I want to know the truth. And they say, yeah. you know, when, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, when the student yeah. is ready, the teacher is there. And she appeared uh, on my on my YouTube feed. I didn't even I don't know how I was. I wasn't even looking for a Dolores Cannon. And she started saying you can heal anything at all in the body you know we're, we're all connected to a force we call the super conscious or the sc people call it the higher self god their creator it doesn't matter that we label everything it answers to everything and dolores said it literally comes through works through the person in trance and they begin to speak they get the answers to you know everything in their life for example you and i could sit here for 10 years and we could contemplate, what do you think you should do in your life? And what, what should I do, David? And I've got this problem and, you know, we don't know how to solve it. But yeah. even in those 10 years sitting there talking, we wouldn't come up with the solutions that the super conscious or the SC gives us during trance, during hypnosis, because the answers are always simple and yet genius. But we couldn't think of it. It's something else that comes through us, working through us. Well, okay, here's a question. I see Dee's asked this. He he says, yeah. does hypnosis implant other people's ideas into your mind or how does it work? Okay, Sarah, answer answer D. What 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 do you yeah. say to that? Is it is, is the is, internet is, went down? Does it... Yeah. So the question is, does yeah. hypnosis implant other people's ideas into your mind? Or, or or how does it work? Just just a, a quick explainer in that one. We, I, I don't need to actually give them suggestions. I, I you know, somebody said um, they want to stop smoking or lose weight, and I used to sort of come in and say can I make a suggestion, whatever? And I always ask permission, but I don't really need to anymore because it's usually in their questions. They come in with five questions about their life. For example, why am I smoking? Why am I drinking? Why have I got this disease? Um, and that mm. will be answered that they actually talk. This super conscious works through them and they talk. It talks through them and the third person. So the answer always comes through them. Um, I don't, yeah, well, I mean, yeah. you know, we, you know, we were talking in the beginning, David, about we're all being programmed anyway. Why yeah. would you want to be programmed under hypnosis anyway or have somebody else's ideas come yeah. in? You know, we, we wouldn't yeah. want that, would we? We want them to be their true, authentic self because you come here to be you. So I, I you know, I wouldn't see any. I, I don't think that would ever happen that somebody else's ideas. I, I don't know how that would that would occur. Um, yeah. I mean, obviously, now you've got you've got other films like the Manchurian Candidate where they are putting ideas and they're sort of training people up to kill people and stuff. Mm. So the army or whoever was doing that, they would need a good 
quite a few years with you, uh, quite a lot of work, and it's quite evil work as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. And of course, it's MK Ultra, which is actually breaking them down yep. and breaking them down, and, bre and they're causing alters, in, and usually they do it with children. So this is like an antidote to all of that. I could work mm -hmm. with somebody who was, um, you know, one of the worst abuse cases you can think of, or somebody who's been MK altered, whatever, and we could get that person back. Because in the sessions, there's no fear. There's no, it's, it's just pure joy and pure love. So no, that, that wouldn't, we, we, that wouldn't be able to happen at all. Does that answer the question or? Yeah, he says, thanks for that. I think that, 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 that's dealt, <laughs> that, that's dealt with that one. But you know, the, the, the thing about it is that, I mean, obviously there's areas of your work, Sarah, like dealing with people who have, and I know you and I have chatted about this um, on and yeah. off, that, that, that people have gone through extreme trauma, um, mm. you know, all kinds of uh, issues uh, that, that you've been confronted with. And I yeah. think it's fascinating that they're coming to you they're not necessarily coming to their GP. Um, they're they're coming to find uh, help in, in a different way. And that, this is one of the reasons that I, I'm so keen to be able to support you as well. I think that's so healthy, if you'll pardon the pun, at every level, that people can find and, and, and look for uh, uh, someone who can provide that understanding that comfort that contact so that if you've gone through the trauma and I know you like know, you know I don't want to go into any particular individual cases but I think it'd be fair to say you've dealt with some very traumatic cases yeah everybody all of us have gone through trauma when you're born when you go to school um, everybody almost everybody has something um, and yeah. And and I'm just I'm just ready I'm just prepared to hear you know the the worst case scenarios that you know people there might have been rape there might have been abuse there might have been whatever but mm. it, it's it's beautiful when they find out why they find out the reasons why and they come out they realize they're much stronger people and also they're told in the sessions whatever it is that happened let it go seriously let it go don't hold on to that anymore and we work through it all and it's gone we deal with it in just one session because you cannot keep this in yeah is is, is that the main issue that they, they they need to let it go whatever the the what was causing what caused the trauma but but i guess i mean if someone's been raped or whatever mm. how do you let that go how is that possible or it, are you, are you not just like forever in a day damaged by yeah. that or what do you think you you can actually come back from that because they realize that they have they've learned something they have some strength and they're not a victim anymore so mm. they've learned that they 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 can gain some sort of strength they become stronger after the event after a while uh, and also they offer forgive they forgive themselves obviously we've all done something you know that we're we, we shouldn't have said or done they forgive themselves but they offer forgiveness to that person do not to their face but it, through their minds you know um, mentally and emotionally they they offer forgiveness to that person too and they're released they release themselves from maybe they had a contract or karma or something. They're released and the karma is on the other person's end. Well, well, you know, it's interesting because I had a lady on, uh, Sarah, this time yeah. last week, a lady yes. called Emma, Emma, Emma Jane um, Taylor. And she was, I mean, her story is fascinating. She's someone who was abused as a um, nine-year-old and all that horrible stuff, you know, went yeah. on. But mm. and, and she's now, I think she's in her 50s now, early 50s. Yeah. And she is strong. And if you listen to her, she's the, I'd say she's probably the stronger for the experience. I mean, she's yeah. fighting for kids and to, yeah. to make sure that um, yeah. other young people wouldn't go through what she went through. But exactly. it, it just shows to your point that people can move beyond these things. Yeah. And, yeah. and then I think this is where you come in, because if you can help some of those people, then that's a that's a real win for the yeah. side of right and the side of, you know, um, yeah. all, all that we, we would want to see. So, I mean, yeah. she, I find her really interesting. And she's she's not the only one. There's loads, and as obviously you've met some of these people who have gone through these deep traumas and whatnot. Yes. But they can be brought to the other side um, without being on a cocktail of bloody drugs and the stuff that they get down the local GP surgery. Isn't that right? Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And a, a, a lot of people, they do go down the drugs and alcohol route because they're escaping. It's mm, escapism. Yeah. And then there's, yeah. there's cancers and there's everything, and liver damage and stuff. And we don't need, that doesn't need to happen. They come and see me and I talk to them and I understand, you, you know, I haven't, I haven't been through everything that they've been through, but yeah. I can, I can, I, you know, I, as an empath, I can feel, I, we, we, you know, all of us, the, the people I get, David, they're highly sensitive people. They all feel, if, if, interestingly enough, that the, there's, there's characteristics with all of them because like me, they all feel like they never fit in here. They're highly sensitive people. They're people watchers. They like to observe and watch people. Mm. And, uh, and you know, we're empaths. We're here to help people as well. Mm. And all mm. of the all the clients I get, I call them the volunteers because I believe they even your, like you said, your guest you had last week, I believe mm. they're here to help. They volunteer to help. And they've been through, yeah. consciously, they did not agree to that. We don't remember. We consciously don't agree. But on some level, we may have agreed to terrible suffering in this life because we come through it stronger. We come out of it. We can teach others. Oh, yeah. We can help yeah. others. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I, I, I always say to people that I've encountered that have gone through some stuff and people I know who are going through a lot of stuff at the moment, um, that the fine, uh, it's a cliche, but it's, it's true. The finest steel is forged in the hottest fires. So yeah. in other words, people who go through some of the absolute worst stuff are the best people at the end of it. it it's it's it, it's almost like a, a law of the universe, Sarah. I think that um, you know, I mean, some of these some people I know and who may well be listening to this, um, they they've gone through so much stuff. It's like yeah. unbelievable, but yeah. somehow they've mm-hmm. been able to find a way to survive, to flourish, and then yeah. to your point. Um, they can then help other people as well. So I think that's what's so good about all of this. Yeah. And we're all helping each other. I become really, really, really good friends with some of my former clients. I only need to see them once. And mm. I flew over to Florida uh, a few months ago to stay with um, a man called Brendan. And Brendan was, he said to me, he admitted to me, he said, I probably had a week left to live. I was going to kill myself. He was a, a raging alcoholic. And uh, he found his purpose during the session as well. And he said to me after the session, I never touched a drink again, never did. And also, you know, he said to me, I would have been dead without the session. So I flew over to Florida. I spent time with him, met his lovely wife and his two daughters. And he said, use my story, use my story. And he said he just found his purpose. And he said everything that was, he said he felt like it was a collective consciousness that he was actually merging with. And he was downloading information and it kept going. The information that he was looking for about his life and how to help people kept going after the session. And it's still going now. Well, well, this is the thing. I mean, on, 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 on in terms of the work that you do, because because I've read a lot of the review the reviews that yeah the clients have given you in terms of yeah. feedback in terms of what what you've done for them. Now, I know that uh, I think as our friends at Google, they take down about half of them, whatever. They, but yeah, uh, they they took down seventy five, and now I'm getting fake reviews. So I'm getting the fake ones, and I just put fake review fake review there was there was somebody i think today wrote a one star review never heard from him ever in my life but but he gave five other companies one star reviews so he must have been at the same company all the different companies at the same time but there you go <laughs> he's, yeah he's cute. Yeah. yeah, there's there's so many. I mean, it's a world that's full of lunatics and on, on, on social media, online in particular, on the internet. Yeah. Um, but 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 I think it does speak to the a testimony to to the, the work that you've been engaged in, Sarah, and what you've yeah. been doing and what you've been trying to you know need to do, that that you have people who, who speak so highly of your services. Like like you mentioned Brandon there in, in, in yeah. Florida. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, there, there's other people here in the UK as well that I know you, that you've done, you know, very successful work. Tell us, tell us this. Just talk us through what is. Tell us what is the set. You know, what is the session like? Is it does it last an hour? Does it last a day? We how, how does it work? <laughs> we never know i they either physically come into my office i've got an office in london or i do it online like this via zoom it doesn't matter because i'm getting a lot of interest from america saudi arabia australia so i can do any country anytime yeah. but i only focus on one one client a day because like you quite rightly asked my favorite question how long is it 
I never know. Yeah. You know, one woman, she before the hypnosis, she had a terrible childhood. And we ended up talking. She was talking to me for five hours before the hypnosis. And she said, I feel so much better now, you know, because we, we all, yeah. we can understand each other. I'm sensitive too. Mm. And then I say to them, you know, they either lie down at home or they, I have a bed in my, my office, a lovely, lovely white yeah. bed. All the office is beautiful. And we can sit outside in nature, kick our shoes off and chat. Then they come into the office and they lie down in the bed. But it's it, the weird thing is everyone starts laughing and giggling. And I, you know, after about the 10th or 20th person, I said, why are you laughing? And one woman said, because I know the cavalry is here. They seem to, even if you're not very spiritual or you can't sense energy, they seem to sense something and they start giggling and laughing. It's very, it's very natural and it's very just quiet and gentle. And then I start talking to them, you know, showing that talking about imagery and visualizations for about 15 minutes or so on. That, you know, we're given in training about five or six pages of visualizations and stuff. Normally I speak, I, I talk to them for one or two pages of the hypnosis and they're they're gone already. I could just tell mm. they go into a past life or they say, oh, I'm in space or, you know, somewhere beautiful. And some something to because some people they can be they don't want to go back to the trauma of the childhood. So they'll show them something beautiful and they'll just be eased into giving them like a story or an analogy or something to explain everything that's happened you know mm, mm, um mm. and then we we after they go into a past life or another planet another dimension a story we we bring in the super conscious and i say do you have permission to ask questions i ask them the questions and then we ask them to do a full body scan this is the force we work with they do a full body scan and the healing of the body begins so the person might start shaking or might start moving or might feel you know some they're tingling or something this is all and so, some people say why are you strapping me to the bed and i I always say I'm not doing anything to you that's something that's an energy so they know that something's happening and um, some people start sort of you know giggling some people might start crying but it, it, it's very everybody's different it's very emotional for people and mm -hmm. um, the majority of people do cry because it's it, it, it's releasing emotion and trapped yeah. fear and everything yeah. in the body and that needs to be released so I see everything and i love it but i never ever know what to expect david i never ever know because everybody each each person is an individual and unique i don't know how they're going to react but yeah it's see, powerful th th see that's one of the big differences i think between what you do and what allopathic doctors do they sit yeah. there and they've got their checklist and you know you're going to be given this that and the other it's on the list and that's it. They, the, uh, human, the, the, the older I get, the more I understand how complex and delicate humans are. We, we all are, every one of us. Um, you know, uh, w w and, and so for, for someone to go and sit down for a five minute consultation with a GP, honest to God, I, I, I don't see why would you do it? Why would you even yeah. think of doing that? Yeah. But, so you're like the opposite. You're you're you're, you're yeah. the opposite. You're basically saying, "Come to me, and you know, I'll give you all the time that you need." So we're yeah. going to get to the to grips with what the issues are that we need to yeah. resolve here. I mean, I personally yeah. think that's very refreshing. Yeah, they they want to heal the body. They want answers. But some people, and there's nothing wrong with this. People think if you're a spiritual person, you shouldn't want money or be into money or want abundance there's nothing wrong with that because we are here to uh, manipulate mm. energy which means to create things some people say i want a new home i want maybe maybe money so i can you know help other people i want more mm. money i yeah. want abundance i want financial wealth and we can do that with them too and i had another that the man that was in florida he was a u.s attorney prosecutor so they're not <laughs> they're not your yeah. average sort of you know spiritual mm. flower power person these are proper prosecutors that, that mm. you know they mm. know what they're what they're talking about as well you know you can't fool people and another woman was she did the millionaire's mindset she was a u.s uh, attorney prosecutor as well and she said she made sales two sales she was a, 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 a selling art as well on the side and she was selling whilst under hypnosis because that was her that was her wish that was she wanted to actually make some money and she also said she was being sued herself. She was being um, 
mm-hmm. she was being accused of she'd sold something and it was fake or something. And in America, she said, yeah. they're going to go for you. She said, I'm going to lose my home and my marriage. And this court case had been going on for a year. And we didn't really, tr- we just talked about the blockage. We didn't do much. And when she woke up, she received an email to say, it's okay. We're canceling the, 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 the court case against you and it's fine. Just drop it. So it must be something, an energetic thing that, that we're all yeah. doing as well. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't think it was me that did it, but we unblocked something or she unblocked something. So would you say that you, that you're basically, are you the conduit then? Yes. That's essentially what you are. You are the yes. conduit yes. that things flow through. Yeah. Yeah, that's somebody right. said, to, that's that's a really good analogy. Somebody said, you're the conduit for this force of this energy. Because I always say to people, I'm not I'm not answering it for you. Thanks so much. But I didn't heal you. It's, it's something else. It's them. And the people say to me, but we need you. We need Sarah as a conduit. Or somebody else said, you're like a magnifying glass for this force or this power, this healing. It comes through you and yeah. into the person. Yeah. But it isn't me as such. Maybe, maybe it's teamwork. And, and, and uh, yeah, well, uh, yeah, I get that. And, and you see, I mean, how many people do you think have got the the skill that you've got, the link that you have? Do I mean, are the is it in terms of hypnosis? Is is, is it, do many people have this, or is it, or are there just a small number of people can do this? What's your view? I I. I think you've got to really, really care about people. You've got, I love people. If I go to my local coffee shop where, where I go, my local Cafe Nero, I want to hear people, you know, yes, not right. all the time, but I want to hear their life story. And people do tell me their life story. And then suddenly I, I say, I've got to, got to go now. But I would almost pay good money to hear people. I want to know everything i'm a curious so i think you should be curious you should care if you love people you love helping you love to hear the story and you want you want to see these miraculous changes in people that's all you need but uh, you know in my spare time i'm reading dolores cannon books i'm reading hypnosis i'm finding stuff that they didn't teach us in training i'm finding my own methods i'm sitting in my coffee shop going Everybody should know this. People should people should be trained to know this as well. What? Why aren't they teaching that in the Dolores Cannon Institute? It's all in her books. I'm uncovering things that I think I'm being shown, and I'm being given a jigsaw yeah. of 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 information. Where the last two weeks I had clients coming in and they were describing sort of an emerald shaped city with specific types of gems and specific knowledge and statues and 10 of them saw the same thing and I'm thinking but well what's going on why is everybody seeing the same thing in the same way describing and I said what is that gem for what is this emerald for and they all said healing and I'm thinking, but there must be another force working through them. They they can't all know each other and get their story straight with each other. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It it, it 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 is. I mean, the power itself, this connect, the, the superconscious. The yeah. Essay, I mean, it, it in a way, it, terminologies don't really matter because, as no. you say, you could equally apply that in a Christian sense to to yeah. God. Uh, um, right. You know. I mean, yeah. for example, you know, you read the Bible, there's yeah. lots of cases where there yeah. were, let's call them miracle workers, not just yes. Jesus Christ, but others as well. Yes. They were able to do things that yeah. go be, go beyond the parameters of the stuff that we see and hear. I, I think I think the problem is we are spiritual beings in a physical world. And 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 and, and I think we are therefore by definition more than maybe we, we think we are. And I think I think honestly where society's gone so wrong is we've lost that spirituality connection. Whatever you however you want it we we have lost that so much and it's to our detriment. Whereas mm-hmm. Sarah and this I wanted to mention this to you that I'm talking about the West, you know, the mm-hmm. Western civilization. If you mm-hmm. go to the East, if you go to Let's take Japan, shall we? If you go to somewhere like that, mm. I think it's different. I know you've been out there. I think those people maybe have retained something that we've thrown away. What What mm. do you think about that? I, I went there. I was taken to uh, Mount Fuji. 
And the tour guide, when we got to Mount Fuji, I mean, Japanese people, they say, that, you know, one of my friends there said, they don't share their stories. How did he? T I said, he told me his life story. And he said he was during COVID, he lost everything and he was suicidal. And he said he went to Mount Fuji and prayed to the mount because they believe in the spirit. Mm. Everything is consciousness, a mountain, a rock a tree, everything, an animal, everything has consciousness. It's alive. Mm -hmm. And he said he prayed to the spirit of Mount Fuji. And he said the next day he got his job back. He was he, had a, he was married with a baby. He was going to commit a suicide. He was going to kill himself. And the very next day, everything turned around. He said he started crying when we went to Mount Fuji. And he said that was because he believes he because he prayed to Mount Fuji to the spirit. And, and mm -hmm. yeah, I, 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 I think we need, we've lost the connection. I even, I touch trees. I say to people all the time, I touch the trees, I speak to them, I get the connection and, and they will respond back. And do you, do you believe in grounding? You know, this business yes. about, I yeah. mean, one of the, I think, I think most people watching this probably yeah. do it and don't get it. If you're at the beach, say, <laughs> you, so if you're taking a wander along the beach and you take your socks off, or whatever, and you just walk in the sand, Yes. Most people kind of feel good about that. That's yes. grounding, isn't it? I mean, and it yes. doesn't have to be the beach. It could be a field. It could be anywhere. Yes. Would you agree that, that grounding, again, it's something yes. we do, yes. but we don't know why we're doing it? Yeah. And when I'm talking, like when it's spring or summer at my office, I say to people, I, I bring them to the, it's called the secret garden at the back. And I say, I'm not pressurizing you but do you want to take your shoes off and they're the best conversations ever because we're grounding we can sit on the grass or at least put our feet both of us kick our shoes off and we just sit and we talk like old friends and that's the best and, session ever and, and and what do you think happens so so how you what is grounding? i'm trying to ask what 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 happens when we do that when we're grounding are we connecting in are we plugging ourselves into the yeah. planet what is is that what it is what would you say yeah. sarah yeah 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 you're 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 connecting back with the earth um so so that's why i say you know we just we just sit on the grass put our feet on the grass yeah. and we just you know and we just we just let nature do its thing you know, and I find that very healing as well. So I think it is. I think it is. It's like we're plugging in. And I think even science agrees with that as well. They they, mm -hmm. they can actually measure it as well. And um, mm -hmm. that, that the body is is taken in all this energy as well, hasn't it? So, well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll tell you, one of, one of the things that I do, you know, I don't do it all the time, but sometimes I'm at a, look, I have a place at the seaside. Yeah. And one of the things that I like to do, apart from walking on the beach, I for most months of the year, but bearing in mind, I'm talking Northern Ireland, North Coast, it gets a bit cold there. But I like to go in to the sea um, in the in, sort of first thing in the morning before I even done anything else. Just go in for mm. a little, I don't know what you'd call it, sort of like it's a dip in the in the sea. That's all it is. But it's mm. a bit more than that there because you feel so good, Sarah. You come out of that. Yeah. That bloody freezing water and you feel mm. fantastic mm. and 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 that's very common now you see lots of people i mean there's an endless succession especially women uh who go but there's the odd man like myself goes in as well and yeah. again it's the same sort of thing isn't it you're you're in the you're, you're dipping your body into the ocean to the sea you're connecting with the sand you're you're you're, you're stepping outside the, the 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 limits that we have we just put around our, ourselves every day and i think that's a good thing don't you Mm, definitely. And it, it's positive. You're recharging the positivity in the body and it's actually taking away the negativity too. You can't mm. think of a single thing that you're angry or you you keep, you, you know, we always say, what were we arguing about? Even when you go to the forest or, you know, the, the woods yep. where, where we go nearby, everybody's yep. smiling and laughing and happy. But then I feel when I'm in central London, I always feel like when I'm around buildings and stuff, I feel it's it's kind of a, a a bit uneasy, isn't it? You know that energy. Yeah, it's, it's there's no way anyone lives in a concrete jungle, and and maybe that's the problem. Maybe that's the reason why there's so much bad health around. We've built these monstrous uh, concrete cities, uh, London being a great example of it. But you know, New York, you could, you could name your city, and 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 I think they. May, they always strike me as being very soulless, you know, and you sort yep. of think, OK, I know you've got Central Park in New York, so maybe you could go there. Um, London, you've got parks as well. But 
I, I just think um, for me, I'm lucky. I live in the country. So if, you know, my nearest neighbors are cows, basically. Mm -hmm. I, have a tree, I get fields all around me here. Um, so I, I, and I enjoy that. And between that and the seaside, I, I basically, I suppose I avoid cities until uh, a reasonable yeah. degree, apart from the 1st of March, where I'll be very happy to be in a city, but only for a so amount of time. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I can't wait to meet everybody. Yeah. Well, as I said, look, folks, Sarah will be here on the evening. Uh, so 1st of March, those of you, and I know some of you are coming along, um, you, this will be your chance to, 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 to meet Sarah. Come up and talk to Sarah afterwards as well, by the way. Yeah. Um, we we ordinar mm -hmm. uh, ordinarily retire to a little bar, which is, as Sarah can mm -hmm. attest, about a minute's walk from the venue. So mm -hmm. it's, um, it's a handy place to go. And I see the comments about the price of fish and chips in that particular little bar. But you don't have <laughs> fish and chips. You just have a glass of wine or whatever. But uh, yeah, I mean, you, you know, I think, Sarah, that the kind of work that you're involved in, it, 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 I, I like to promote things that mm -hmm. I think are good that's the only reason to do any of this stuff. That's the yeah. only reason to do the stuff that we do. We're, we're yeah. similar in our different ways, you know. Um, and uh, um, I, I think that when I look at the mess of allopathic medicine and I yeah. see people with so many problems and I think they're looking in the wrong place for solutions, they do well to look to yourself and and, and, and to, to like-minded people like you who can oh. give them benefits that, you know, it gonna could transform their lives. So that's a good oh. reason. That's a good reason to come along, meet Sarah on the night. Uh, so uh, so the next time, Sarah, I'm gonna see you. Gonna be on stage in yeah. that particular <laughs> on this close location uh, in, uh, in, in 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 West London. Somewhere and, uh, in London. Somewhere in London, we're going to have a great night. Yeah. And uh, I see Jed saying he's going to have fish and chips with Leslie and beer. So, uh, yeah, well, I think like the thing about it is, <laughs> it, it, it is okay. we're trying to raise consciousness. We're trying to make connections. We're trying to, um, you know, basically build on, Sarah, I guess, the stuff we talked about earlier. You know, all the stuff we've all, we're all on a journey. I think all of us are. Mm -hmm. You know, and 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 the, the best thing we can do, I think, especially if we're around like-minded people, there's a healthiness in that, and that's what I take out of like the December event we had. There was mm. a buzz and a sense of togetherness, and yep. and, and, and you know, a good vibe, and mm. uh, and I th and I'm sure we'll have that uh, uh, as well. So look, Sarah, we've got to the end of the allocated time. I can see or or the clock has has beaten us um just to say uh, everyone you can follow sarah over uh on that's on the twitters if i think i'm or should i call it x i just call it twitter still x is a stupid <laughs> name for it There's i the, do too yeah yeah call it twitter i don't care elon musk you know knock yourself out uh quantum hypno uh this is a website as well you can get lots more information from uh, from sarah over there as well so so when i tell you and here's uh also where's this then is this your um is that Insta? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. See, that, that's the one platform. Yeah. I don't recognize that because I'm not on Instagram. I'm on TikTok, but I'm not on Instagram. So that's the one platform I've stayed away from. But uh, anyway, you can find Sarah on all those places. And there's, a, As you can tell from this conversation, there's a wealth of knowledge and help that's available to anybody uh, and, uh, and a chance just to have a general chat, as I say, in just under two weeks time so sarah can i thank you um first of all for supporting my platform without you none of this would be possible so everyone please note that's why i tell you we do those little podcasts every day i do say you know hit the link below yes <laughs> on cue <laughs> on, have no, under, under every <laughs> podcast i do uh, oh. and, and check out because look folks we have to stick together or we all fall apart so that's the message from myself and from sarah i hope for you uh for for, for 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 tonight so listen sarah thanks so much thanks thank everybody you. over on the different streams for uh for being with us i hope you find this an interesting chat and i will be back on next monday with another uh, interesting guest uh on a totally different topic uh but slightly macabre but i'm not going to say what it is but anyway you'll find out more <laughs> next before next monday anyway uh so that's it Thank you so much for tuning in and see you all soon. Bye from Sarah and myself, everyone. Bye-bye.